This is the product of the Making Meteorite video that I uploaded a few weeks ago. It's a copper aluminum alloy that forms a structure inspired by the Wiedmannstatten in meteorites. For my first video though, this performed pretty well. Although, regrettably, there was one thing missing, and of course, that is a discussion on etching the material. So, in this video, we'll be exploring etching. So, I first want to say that I actually did etch it. This ingot here is actually one of the first iterations of the alloy, and I actually etched this exact ingot. And after etching, it looks a little something like this. Now, personally, I think this is really ugly, and it actually looked better before. But let's take a closer side-by-side -side comparison and understand why it looks kind of bad. So here's the two ingots, etched and unetched. And in at least my opinion, I think that the unetched sample looks far better because there's far more contrast and you can resolve the intermetallic rods easier. But let's take a closer look. This dark background material that we see is eutectic between the alpha aluminum and the theta aluminum. That means it's a dual phase material. And this is key to understanding why we're losing that contrast upon etching. You can see that the eutectic turns from a nice dark gray color to a more white color. We can see this again in this region of the ingot with the unetched portion looking far better than the etched portion. So for comparison, here's etching a real meteorite with a nitric acid based etching. You get some nice contrast, but if I were to use this same etching on my ingot, nothing would happen at all. But wait, I just said I etched my ingot, right? Well, that's because I etched it with a hydrofluoric acid-based etchant, not a nitric acid-based etchant. Etchants for aluminum in its alloys must contain a small amount of hydrofluoric acid in order to strip the chemically stable aluminum oxide surface layer. Once that surface layer is attacked, the remaining composition of the etchant, either nitric and or hydrochloric acid, can go ahead and actually etch the aluminum. Now, before I explain why I think this etch turned out poorly, let's throw a few more things at the wall and see if anything sticks. I got a lot of suggestions from the comments and I'd feel pretty guilty not trying any of them out. So I went ahead and gave the ingot a fresh polish. It's typically a good idea to etch right after you polish because then the etching can better attack the surface. Once everything was polished, I tried etching with a pretty large variety of different chemicals. I tried all in different concentrations, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, ferric chloride, and I even threw in glacial acetic acid just because, why not? After this, I tried aggressive bases because the aluminum oxide surface layer is pretty unstable at high pHs. I tried some sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and potassium carbonate, which will actually pop up again in another video. But unfortunately, after trying out these etchings, I saw no success. I even let some of these chemicals sit on the ingot overnight, but even then, a uh, pretty bad, but I guess you could expect that. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on etchants at all, but I would confidently say that this material is pretty difficult to etch to achieve the contrast that we're looking for. And so here are my thoughts as to why that is. So here's the Wiedmannstatten like pattern that we achieved, and let's take a closer look right here. The inner metallic rods are actually made up of individual repeating crystals and the darker region in between is that eutectic material. Let's zoom in even more in this area to visualize that eutectic region. And now we can really resolve that eutectic region. You see we have two phases, the alpha aluminum in the gray and the theta aluminum in the white. The theta aluminum is otherwise known as the aluminum copper intermetallic compound, and it's present in both the eutectic region as well as in those square crystals. And in my opinion, its presence in both of these regions is one of the main reasons why this etch is so difficult. So then let's imagine real quick that we used a hydrofluoric nitric acid based etchant on this material. First, the hydrofluoric acid is going to strip that oxide. And then the nitric acid is going to be able to attack the material. Now the alpha aluminum is much more reactive to the nitric acid than the theta aluminum. So it's going to be preferentially attacked. And a significant amount of that alpha aluminum is going to dissolve, resulting in trenches where it exists. And then thus high points where the theta aluminum exists. My thinking is that these high points and these low points within the eutectic result in it scattering light, which makes it appear whiter. And thus the contrast between the eutectic region and the intermetallic rods is reduced. Now, as far as why all the other etchants didn't work, that just comes down to the chemical reactivity of the material. Hydrofluoric acid is strictly necessary to strip the oxide layer off the surface of the alpha aluminum. And thus, without it, the alpha aluminum is never attacked. The theta aluminum is also rather chemically inert as well and resists attack from most of these acids. With the caveat being, of course, any galvanic corrosion that occurs. But don't get your hopes down because I'm creating a part two to this series where I'm working with a material system that's much 
easier to etch and perhaps produces an even better Wiedmannsdatten structure. So be on the lookout for that video in the coming weeks. So there we have it. Those are my thoughts as to why this material is incredibly difficult to etch to achieve the contrast that we're looking for. Now again, I'm not an expert on etchants and I would appreciate anybody's thoughts in the comments. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.